Polaroid cameras can be expensive, but Canon subscription is not. So you can do something like that in Canva or maybe this. I mean, this is a lot cooler, although it will need a bit of extra time, but I'll help you. So let's start with the simple one first. And I need a coffee. Also, I know that paper straws are great for environment, but they are not good for having any sort of beverage. Like they just don't work. Anyway, this is not what this video is about. Let's start with the simpler tutorial first. So what we have to do is we just have to open the Canva app or go to the Canva website on our browser and then choose any dimension that you like. I'm going to use this picture as my background. You can pick any. And now I'm going to pick this black square as an overlay. And then I'm going to reduce the transparency so it looks like some dark aesthetic sort of filter on the picture. And of course, you can skip this part if you're familiar with the basics of Canva. The timestamps are going to be in the description box. But if you're not, then just feel free to stay on this part. So now let's reduce the transparency and perfect. I really wanted the Polaroid to pop out. So this is why I made the background really dark, but you can just stop wherever you want. Now, here's the real work. Go to the Elements tab and search for Polaroid camera. Now, depending on your subscription, if it's free or if it's paid, you will have options here and you can just pick any from the graphic section or the photo section. I'm going to pick from the photo section and remove the background of it. So I'm just going to hover my mouse on it so you can see the name of the picture and search it for yourself if you want the same one and you're not able to find it and tap on it and then add it to your canvas and remove the background. And there we have it, our Polaroid camera. This is like my favorite. I find it really cute because it looks very, very close to how the old Polaroid cameras were supposed to look. Anyway, now let's create one more empty canvas. Go to the Elements tab again and search for Polaroid frame. Now again, we have two options here. We pick any element from the graphic section or we pick any from the picture section. And I'm going to pick from the graphic section this time. This one is my favorite because it looks very, very close to how Polaroid frames actually look like. And now I'm going to pick a picture of myself. Let's go for this one. It was like hidden deep down in my uploads. So it took a long time to find it. And we're going to resize it so it fits inside the Polaroid frame. And then we are going to download it and make sure that you download it with the same settings I'm showing on the screen. The picture format should be PNG, the background should be transparent, and you only have to download this page, which is the second page for me. So you can just pick whatever page is that for you. And that's it. Check off these settings and then download your image. Also, a little disclaimer for people who do not use the premium version of Canva and want access to good graphics and pictures, you can actually search for them on Pinterest and on Google as well. I personally prefer Pinterest because it always comes up with something aesthetic, but Google is also a very good source if you know what are the right keywords to search for what you're looking for. Now, getting back to the tutorial, let's delete this page because we don't need it anymore. Less the clutter, the better. And now we are going to upload the same image that we just downloaded because we want it to come out of our Polaroid. So we want it in our project. And now the picture is uploaded. So we are going to drag it in our project or on our canvas, whatever you would like to call it. We're going to resize it so it's in the right proportion with the Polaroid camera. And then we are going to layer it back, which is behind the Polaroid camera, because it has to look like that it's coming out of the Polaroid camera. So in the layer section, we are going to just send it backwards. Once it's done, we are going to make sure that our picture, the Polaroid picture is selected, and we are going to add an animation to it. The animation is called baseline and we are going to reduce the speed of it so it looks more subtle because if it's too quick then we will not be able to even notice the effect of it coming out of the camera right so now the project is ready we are going to download it as a video file or the gif if that's what you want and that's it the part one of the project is done and we should be proud of it now, if you want to be pro at it, you can stick for this part of the video. It's going to just take two more minutes if you want to learn it, you know. So yeah, let's get to that part now. So the first thing that we're going to need is more of your Polaroid pictures. And since we already know how to make them, I'm not going to show you the tutorial again. It's just more to your four Polaroid pictures that I created of myself. Now going back to the same project that we just created because it's the basis of everything and then we have to select the Polaroid picture and add an animation to it without removing the first one which was the baseline and then we have to create an animation. 
so it will just follow our mouse wherever we drag the mouse the animation is going to look like that and that's really cool to be honest and then at last applying the wiggle animation to the polaroid picture and now this is accumulation of three animations the first is a baseline which is bringing out the polaroid picture out of the camera and then we created the animation which is stacking up the pictures on the right hand side and then the wiggle effect which is just you know creating that little wiggle for the pictures on the right hand side when the pictures are getting stacked up so yes this is how the wiggle effect is going to look like at the end once the picture is out of the polaroid camera and now the first part is done let's duplicate this and move this picture aside let's make it small and keep it selected and then we have to go to the animation tab again and then we have to delete the part all the animations that we created we have to delete them the only animation that we will now reapply again is the wiggle effect because it has to keep doing the whole wiggle thing on the right hand side so yes let's do that the wiggle effect is applied and now we are going to bring the new polaroid picture to the canvas let's go for this one resize it just like we did it with the first project and put it back which is behind the polaroid camera so that it looks like that it's coming out of it i mean we already know the drill and trust me it's not as complicated as it may sound like for the first time because that's what it felt like to me as well you do this all by yourself just once and then it will be chop chop very easy so yes now we are going to select the new polaroid picture and create an animation so just like for the first one it will look like that we have created a path which makes it look like that it's coming out of the polaroid camera and now the difference is that it's also getting stacked up on the older polaroid picture because once we play it all together the first one and the second one the clips you know it will look like that they are all getting stacked up so this is how we do it and then you make a copy of it again and then you add you know the new polaroid picture create a pathway of animation for it and with a wiggle effect in the end and well you keep repeating the process depending on how many polaroid pictures you want to bring out of the polaroid camera and well, i wish you all the luck that you need for doing this for the first time and let me know in the comments if you guys need any additional help i'll make sure that i get back to each one of the nice comments also don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these bye